Hey, welcome to the after party. I'm Stan, and if you watched last season, I'm joined again by Lauren. Hi. We finally figured out our contract disputes. Yeah, we and, were in negotiations. Yes, able this to was break hard her. To get me here. Yeah, it took a lot. Yeah, and, it's these chairs. And what I you demanded... don't see is the animosity that happens <laughs> off script uh, or off camera, I should say. Yeah, but it, you got these brighter chairs, yeah. and I love it. Yeah, we can fake it for the next five minutes, though. Cool. And uh, <laughs> yeah. but we are we are in a series called uh, Dear Church, where it's all about Jesus's words to actual congregations and mm. you know peek behind the curtain sometimes we get to make these videos having seen the sermon and sometimes we make them just kind of knowing the theme of the sermon and a lot of these churches are dealing with just the idea of compartmentalizing their faith or um, being one way in the church and being a different way because of the culture and the pressures around them and we've just been receiving lots of questions in you know just as people are hearing the sermons in their life groups etc about how do I actually start to live my life consistently between my church life and my, my marketplace life, my neighborhood life, by every other aspect of life? So we were just talking a little bit about what, what have been your experiences when you were not a paid Christian, yeah. <laughs> not a staff person? Yeah. What was it like to be a Christian out in the world? Yeah. Although talking about being a pastor or working at a church is, is a unique conversation sometimes yeah. with people, but it really made me think about, so my original job or training was as a nurse and I worked in the ICU mm -hmm. and a dialysis center. And those are people who are in dying from end stage kidney failure. And I was in my twenties and I was really good at my job, mm -hmm. but people were dying all around me and I never talked to them about God. Um, I think I told you, I never even prayed for them on my way to mm. work or anything. And I was totally a Christian. I was newly married. We were just kind of like, la, 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 living our best life. But and we mostly went to church, except mm -hmm. for when we wanted to sleep in. Like on all outward uh, uh, observation, like, yeah, model Christian yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, not doing anything bad. Um, but man, we weren't. I was not integrating God mm -hmm. into my work life or into how I could be thinking or praying or reaching out to the people I spent 40 hours a week with. Um, and I saw these patients regularly. And when I, it's been one of the deepest regrets of my life. And mm -hmm. I reflect back on it and it's, it makes me sad. And God's brought redemption to that in other work that he's given me to do and things like that. But, but what would the difference have been mm -hmm. in both my life, the blessing it would have been to me and the lives of the people that I cared for if I had brought my whole being or my whole um, sense of who God had called me to be mm -hmm. into those um, relationships. But um, are I've there specific things that you feel like, oh, this is I wish I would have done this in an overall sense in those moments? Well, I wish I'd prayed for them. Mm. I wish I'd been bold to have conversations because I think when people are at nearing the end of their life or very, very sick, they're more maybe open to that. Um, one of the things that I've seen my husband do that I'm always inspired by is he leads a division of a company here in Kirkland and he has been able to integrate the concept of servant leadership mm -hmm. into his leadership and he knows it's a god idea mm -hmm. but a lot of the people he works with don't know that it originates you know kind of in, in biblical, concept, biblical yeah. concepts and so they're like wow that's really cool like how do you think of that or like what? <laughs> you know and he's like yeah this is kind of what god's called him to do when he feels like he's just working in aerospace, but he's able to integrate some of those biblical ways of living into his work. And it's really inspiring. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think we, we had someone kind of ask the question, uh, so, okay, so I'm, I'm trying to be an engineer or an accountant or whatever as a Christian, like, does that mean I just like pray over the thing that I'm building and that's like mm -hmm. my duty? And uh, yes, you should pray because it's all a mystery and none of us know <laughs> any of this science stuff works. But uh, my, all of my like, real jobs, I guess, like not that ministry is not a real job, but it's a bit different kind of job, um, were in food service. And so, um, you know, you're always going to be kind to the customers, but a lot of the integration of your faith is more, how are you treating your coworkers? Like, mm. are you a person mm -hmm. that they look forward to working for or working with? I should say, are you the kind of person who's helpful? Do you build relationships with them beyond just like what's going on at work? Because God might use those down the line into other things. And so it's, not necessarily this like, oh, I have to find a way to like insert, uh, you know, a Bible study or prayer time into what I'm doing, though those might be doors that God opens up. You know, I think we have a ton of people in our church who, you know, prior to work starting, they host a Bible study or mm -hmm. they go out and get coffee with their coworkers mm -hmm. and 
have have faith-based conversations, but it's more about kind of bringing a Christ-like attitude and posture mm -hmm. into the work you're doing. And the thing about that is, is you can't really do that if you're trying to sustain your entire faith on just the one hour that is considered mm. church. Mm -hmm. Like there's just not enough of that one hour in a week to really, you know, fuel yeah. you into a Christ-like life for the rest of the week. Yeah. Yeah. We kind of have talked about, I mean, you lead groups. Yeah. I used to lead groups. <laughs> we like groups. Um, but talking about how your life group helps sustain that, what you are learning kind of as a self feeder, like mm -hmm. where are you allowing God to kind of um, put his thoughts and ideas into your mind Monday through Saturday and not just on Sunday? Yeah. I mean, the Bible has a lot of food metaphors for yeah. spiritual growth. And yeah. if you just think about like, if you just ate one meal on Sunday morning and tried <laughs> to get through the rest of the week, it just would be hard. It just yeah. would be impossible. And we just need to think about our spiritual life as kind of diet based, mm -hmm. you know, that there is a, a variety of meals, whether it's a life group, a spiritual discipline, mm -hmm. church on Sunday morning that fuel what's going on mm -hmm. the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. And we would just encourage you to engage in those, yeah. whether, um, you know, joining a life group might be one. If you're in a life group and watching this, like going deeper into your conversations, but also taking on things like Sabbath or silence and solitude mm -hmm. or a prayer exercise. Uh, these are all things that can enhance what goes on in your spiritual life. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you'll see that as we continue on to these letters that Jesus has written to the churches, like these themes will keep coming up and kind of the answer is the same, but it's, it's learning how to integrate your life holistically. Yeah. Yeah. Have a great night.